Hey everyone! Today I am going to be doing a quick tutorial on how I approach tackling fur in my artwork. So fur is pretty similar to hair, um, but what I love about fur is that there's this texture that you can get in in your pastel drawings that, you know, usually pastel drawings you don't get a lot of texture or variation in in your drawings um, because you can't build up layers like oil paint or acrylic paint um, but uh, doing hair and fur and other things like that is one really great way to show variation in your in your drawings so I thought I'd show you that today and really it's just an excuse for me to draw cute things. So today I am drawing this guy. His name is Gold Rush. Uh, we met him on a farm in South Carolina or um, somewhere, I believe, in uh, that area. Uh, he's a cutie pie and I thought that I could show you a bunch of different textures of fur. He's got this kind of wiry hair fur on the top of his head and then more smooth fur on his nose. And so I thought I'd show you that today. And I have already kind of mapped out what I want him to look like here. It's a really rough sketch that I'll probably be fiddling with as I go along. but. Again, this is just to show you our process of how we do fur. And as usual, I am going to be filling in, I'm going to be using probably browns, um, some red or a deeper red color like this. Um, and then perhaps for details, I'll be using some pencils, but we'll see how it goes. I also have, you know, pieces like this that I can use that'll be good for details. So we'll see. But first, as always, I'm going to get a base color going for fur. I like to get a base color down on anything that I'm working with because it helps put in detail and that is especially true for fur because this is a multi-layer process. So I'm going to be contouring the shapes first. Um, this again, I'm going to just be putting down that kind of rusty orange and the light is coming from here so it's going to be lighter over on this side his head's kind of picking up a little bit of that light over there got that nice peachy color that lightens it up some light yellow and then I'm gonna be taking some dark brown just roughing in shadows This might be a good time to use, I'm just using a carpet square here, just to quickly blend in. And when I say carpet square, I mean I bought a carpet and just cut it up into little squares that fit my hand. Alright, so I kind of roughed in his head, his ears are a little darker. Thank you. 
And I'm going to be showing this to you guys, but the main thing with fur is that you, you see in our drawings we do a lot of blending um, and that again is a personal preference of how blended you like your pictures to be but we like to be more realistic and we tend to blend our colors a lot and you'll see here with fur that I actually don't blend as much as I normally do Gonna get his eye, his cute little button eye. He's got some of that fur over there. And you can see they aptly named him Gold Rush because of the color of his his fur. He's a beautiful golden color. And you don't need to be terribly precise at this stage. Again, I'm just roughing in colors. The detail will come later when we start putting in the fur. And I don't know anatomy of alpacas, but this little jowly part right here, I swear, is where they keep all their spit that they use to uh, spit at people and at um, the, their fellow alpaca friends. Alright, so we got his face and I'll just kind of roughen his neck here. And again, I'm just putting in simple value here. I like get darker here where there isn't as much light. But over here, where the light is coming from, his fur is lighter. And you can tell too that I'm not using a whole lot of black, I'm using it sparingly just in the the parts that are going to stay mostly black. At this point. 
All right, we have a general alpaca shape. All right, so now the main part, and actually, um, I think his head is a little, maybe goes a little bit like that. Just fix his ear a little. There we go. Okay. So now that we have the general kind of underpainting, I'm going to start working on the detail. So we'll start with his nose. And like I said before, his nose is kind of smooth a smoother fur compared to the rest of his fur. So I have a black base and to build up texture what I'm going to be doing is using probably white the light cream color and some grays and I'm going to be going now from dark to light so and this also is where I start going with the grain I start building in the structure of what I'm working on based on where the fur is going. So you can see there's a highlight right here. His nose curves down and I'm gonna try and be getting that curve. And again, this is a really quick demo. If I wanted it to look more realistic, I'd be spending more time getting exactly every hair in place, but I think there's a, a place and time for realistic, and there's something to be said for a more abstract, impressionist um, art, so um, you get the you get the feeling more and that's kind of what I'm going for I'm going for a general alpaca feeling today he's so got his nose his little cute little nose I okay, need to make this a little darker And again, I'm going with the direction of the fur. This mouth right here. And under his nose, he has a little highlight. Like that. And if it's if it's too light, what I do is just kind of tap down the color. I kind of blend it in a little bit. And you see I'm just doing short little strokes. So I've done a dark gray and now I'm going to be working and some of the little detail. So I kind of like halfway blend in the dark gray. And for the, the little final detail on his nose, 
I'm gonna be using the a creamy color right there. And then his nose is catching the light, so I'll be using a little bit of white as well. And a good way to tell if you're getting your values right is to squint and see how dark something is compared to other things. And even though you can't see me, I'm constantly doing that to check um, how things are looking. And again, you can see I'm not using too much of the white here just to, to get some of the highlights. I'm not going to be bothering with the background today, but if I had a background, I would fill this the background in first, and then the very last thing I would do would be to add his little whiskers that he has here. So you can kind of see his whiskers, but not really without a background. That's okay. So we kind of got a general look of his nose. So I'm going to be switching from a more silky texture to a wire hair texture. And there's not too much difference in the, the way I approach it except instead of just doing kind of straight strokes, I'll be doing more kind of loopy curls just to show that he has some texture. And again, you can't really see this detail that much without the background, but putting it in and again with fur I like to work from generally light or dark to light so I put in general like the curve of his head but now I'm gonna be blocking in a little bit more like the the darker parts of the fur. And this doesn't have to be exact either, but in order for the, the light parts to show on his fur, you need the darker parts. Because you, you can't just see the top of the fur, you can see some underneath, you can see some all the way really to his head. And you can also see that I'm starting to still contour in the, the places where his head is catching the light more. I'm using black more sparingly. And I'll start going in with browns instead. And the, the length of the strokes that I'm 
using depend on how long the fur is. So if he had really long, long fur, like billowing hair, I'd be, you know, going like this for each stroke, very long. But relatively speaking, he has a short, shorter hair, so, or fur. Um, so I'm just mapping it out with those short strokes. And you can choose to blend or not to blend. Sometimes I blend and then regret doing it, so I go back in again. Um, but generally I, I like the darker parts not to, st to stick out visually as much as the lighter parts. So I like to kind of, by blending that into the base that you already have, they stick out visually less than the highlights. So I've been doing black, dark brown, and then I have this lighter brown, again working from dark to light. That's generally there. I'm gonna be see how it's more curly. I'm not doing just straight. And again, working in the shape of his head. This, that's crucial to to making it look like he's actually a, a rounded figure. Just doing a few golden touches, not a whole lot, mostly where the, the light is hitting him. That's where the gold really stands out in his fur. If I see, I need to make the base a little bit darker, it's no problem, we can go back in. the creamy color that I had, the peachy, I should say. And I don't want to get rid of all the dark that I've put underneath. But I want to catch those highlights that are coming off of here. And he has little kind of tufts. And when I want to blend in to the color I have, so this is the base color that I used, and I just take it to like, like the root of some of the hair, kind of blend that in together, but the highlights are still there. I'm 
You can see that his fuzzy fur is starting to, to show up. And again, for the, the highest highlights, I'm going to be using like a cream color. And I don't need too much of it, mostly just where the sun is catching his fur over on this side. You see how I'm not blending at all? And just for the little bit, the last little bit, I might go back in and just darken up some of the darks with black. just to get the contrast that I'm looking for back in his fur. Just in some of the spots that might have gotten a little too light along the way. All right, so I'm gonna do his ears real quick. His ears are kind of shiny. Um, so again, I'm going to start out with the, the darkest colors in his ear, which are kind of black. And I'm actually, because they're kind of shiny, they're catching like a cooler um, color, so I'm going to be using gray. Again, using the same strokes. little ear tufts. I'm using the cream color just to get the little detail. Gold color. And again, they're more silky, so the silkier the hair, the more blended it is. Alright, so you're kind of getting the gist here. I'm going to continue to work on his the rest of his face, but... It'll be the same techniques that I, I showed you before. So, again, going from light to dark, or sorry, from dark to light, which is the opposite of what we usually do. Um, but you can see the, you know, building up those colors from underneath really highlights the, um, the fur at the end of the day. So, um... That's kind of the strategy I use, and you know, when you're creating your own pastel works, it's it's up to you. If you find a technique that that works for you that you like, then do whatever feels most comfortable. But for me, um, this is how I build up texture in my work, and I'll do this even. For non-fur, like I said, this is kind of how I tackle uh, hair. I tackle hair kind of the same way, going from dark to light, you know, going with the the body um, to, to build shapes within the, the texture that I'm creating. And... Also, with things like carpets, or tapestries, or really anything like that, um, that's how I, I, I generally use the same technique to, to tackle all of those, those things, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in, and I, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. 
Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to to message us. Um, we're here to help. So thank you guys so much, and we will see you around.